Excuse All right, it is 7 o'clock. We'll call this meeting to order. Bailey, can we get a roll call? Councilmember Backus? Here. Councilmember Bain? Here. Councilmember Husnick? Here. Councilmember Eigner? Here. And Mayor Winnick? Here. I ask everybody to rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I look for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Brings us to open forum. Mark Liddell. Willie. 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 Mark Wilde, 9509 North Shore Trail, Forest Lake. Uh, my concerns are with lift station 12. I'll just quickly read through this because if I try to just recite, and we might be here a while. In the 1960s, the sanitary sewer system servicing Lake Holmes in the uh, then Forest Lake Township was installed. At that time, there were still many summer homes around the lake. The system seemed to be adequate for what it served. By the late 1970s, the homes on Forest Lake had changed to mostly year-round homes, and some off-lake areas had been added to the sanitary sewer system. Problems in the sewer system arose, and the homes were being flooded. We live in the area of lift station 12. We're right next to it, to the south of it. Three homes in this area have been flooded and uh, have the potential for backflow problems. The sewer pipe in our home enters at the main floor level. In our home, the backflow would overflow the toilet and tub, run through the back portion of our home, down the basement steps, flood the basement, flow into the sump pit, and we would be pumped out into the yard where it would flow into the lake. This didn't seem like a good situation, so we added a bypass system, which would allow the backflow to be channeled outside before entering our home. In 2006, when the new housing developments were approved to be added to the lift stations, 11, 12, and 13 flow, an engineering report, after much discussion, did recommend that the flow from lift station 13 should bypass lift station 12. This bypass recommendation did not happen until after there was a storm on Memorial Day weekend in 2008. The bypass system in our home kept most of the backflow from entering with the majority flowing through the yard to the lake. A second home in the area had flooding in the lower level. The bypass lift, sta uh, lift station 13 to lift Station 11 has since been installed. Although the possibility of backflow has been greatly reduced over the years, it still exists. I called into the city and wanted to have a meeting about what was being done about this lift station and was told that until it was proved, they don't have meetings like that. So I sent a note back with uh, a couple of concerns on there, one being the uh, the flooding of the houses and the other is when gas was put into our area the gas lines ran down the middle of this access to the houses uh, our electric runs down the middle of it and the two wells are down by the house so if service needs to be done to them uh, there has to be ways for uh, vehicles to get down that access and so I'm, I'm asking is this lift station being put in so that that can happen. As it is now, we can get vehicles down there, but uh, I have no idea what the new plans are because apparently the city doesn't share them until after they're planned. So I am requesting that before anything is concretely done, 
that uh, we can at least talk about this. Thank you. All right, thank you. We've got a couple more people to speak on lift, lift station 12, so uh, Mike. Hello, uh, my name is Mike Doddle, uh, 9495 North Shore Trail North. Um, also uh, here to talk about uh, lift station 12, uh, this project, or the future project here for updating it and moving the lines, I guess. I second a lot what he said and then also uh, Concerns of mine would be the future for, for future home improvements. Uh, Force Main runs, you know, Kitty Corner through my property, and then the uh, gravity feed line. So I'm kind of just here to get information. And same thing that we weren't notified or what's actually going on, what the, what they're going to do with the future project. So. All right. Thank you. That's it. And Roger. Yep. Let me. I'm Roger Weingarth, uh, 9501 uh, North Shore Trail. Um, I'm actually Mike's neighbor, um, and I have had conversations, email conversations, and met with Donovan a while back. Um, my concerns are obviously to do some home improvements to that home. I'd like to obviously put a garage, and if you were ever at my home, you'll see you have to come straight up onto the street, and there's a blind. It's absolutely a blind access, and, and unless I can get the home improvements, I am deathly afraid of uh, getting into a serious accident coming out of there. Uh, and the biggest issue I have, of course, is where the means are, where, the, where, the, where they uh, go across my yard. And um, it sounds to me like if, I, if I'm going to have to if I build a garage or move it back or uh, to make, um, obviously, all the regulations work, um, the city would like, wants to put a lien on my house because if something happens to the main that's underneath there, I'm liable for it. And, and quite frankly, I'm going to agree with Mark and with Mike that I, I just like to know what the plans are. I really I have no access to any information. Um, and I will give Donovan credit. He has been responsive. But again, I still don't have any specifics. So, Thank you. Thanks. Um, I think before we go on, um, Ryan, do you want to address sure. a little bit of what's going on and we can we can have a, uh, a meeting with uh, those concerned community members in that area as well. So, yep. <clears throat> so like the original project, uh, obviously we had favorable bids, so that left the city in a situation where we could either add to the project or just uh, roll it into a future project. Uh, with the direction that we received uh, after we got about halfway through with the base bid, we <coughs> made the decision to move forward and obtain additional pricing from the contractor to see if it would still fit within line of the project budget that we bonded for and two lift stations do uh, so that's obviously lift station 12t you've heard about and 4c uh, and that was a prepared in the change order so you know getting everything to this point pricing and then if you guys did uh, approve the change order then we would go out and uh, you know thoroughly review the projects uh, with the pro property owners just like we did on all the other lift station sites if we're not approving, you know, the project or the change order, you know, we're really kind of ramping up anticipation of an improvement that didn't happen. So, uh, specifically with lift station 12T, obviously in a very tight area, serves, I don't know the exact number of homes uh, off the top of my head, but uh, less, than, less than 20. So, in that area, there's an 8-inch gravity pipe, you know, which drains into the lift station area. So, just like your traditional main line you have a gravity line that drains and then when you run out of gravity we got to pump it out of there currently the force main runs parallel with the trunk line or the main line and i believe that's the line that's been discussed this evening of concern part of the lift station 12t improvements do uh, provide for relocating that out to north shore trail right away so basically we would you know cap and abandon in place the force main where it is and if construction in time happens and severs that pipe, it's no big deal because it's not in use anymore. But we would then realign and bring the force main out to North Shore Trail and then run it parallel with North Shore Trail and that other lift station project that was done uh, several years ago, maybe 10 plus. So then we have two force mains basically coming into one conjunction uh, manhole farther down the road. But it would require relocating them. Because of the tight corridors, landscaping, tree coverage in that area, we're not going in there and, uh, I guess, fully excavating the 
existing stuff out, retrofitting um, per. Worked with a, a design that would work for Public Works. We're basically coming in with a precast fiberglass insert within the existing structure, but, and then replacing all the guts within the structure, just like we have with the others, and a new control panel. So that's the scope of the work. Uh, you know, Do we, you know how old that lift station is right now? Either in the 50s or 60s, I don't have that chart with me. Oh, so it hasn't been? <clears throat> it's original. It is, wow, okay. It definitely needs to have some work done to it. You said you guys are going to be relining the, um, the gravity line? I did not. No. Was that? We would be relocating the force main with the new force main directionally drilled. Okay. Was I and I a concern? I know you mentioned the uh, storms. What was bringing on some of the backups? The contractor we have on board is a, is an aligning contractor. If that's something that we wanted to tackle, we would do that with uh, another project. Obviously, we have a lot of I and I in town, uh, but that would be something we could do anytime. The line of gravity through a, even a quote project. Uh, Public Works does you know go through televising and identify the high priority areas for those lining projects. As the CIP for the, I'm speaking off the top of my head right now, the CIP for the sanitary sewer, I think our next identified uh, cured in place pipe project is 2020. And I think it had $500,000 earmarked if that stayed funded. All right, thank you, Ryan. Um, so we will be discussing this at the agenda tonight. Um, but I think, you know, as Ryan indicated, you know, process. We're going to have to approve it before then, you know, he's going to meet with homeowners. Um, I, would, I would definitely say if we approve it tonight um, and there's some type of complications or hesitations, we'd like to hear about them because we can obviously try to make accommodations as well. So I'm going to move back to the open forum with uh, Jay uh, Schultz. Schultz, Jim Schultz. Or Jim Schultz. Yeah. Hi, Jim Schultz, Forest Lake. Um, I'm here to ask you for a streetlight tonight. Um, I'm a little bit out of sequence. Uh, normally I go to the airport commission first and then I come to you folks. Um, due to uh, the sequence of things, um, I've come here tonight first. Uh, let me see if I can bring this up. my desktop. Um, in the meantime, uh, uh, we just recently, within the last uh, week or two, have had a second break-in at Hangar E or Echo at the uh, airport. And um, can all of you see the photograph? Okay. Uh, Hank, what you're seeing there is looking northward, uh, Highway 97 runs uh, from left to right, and then you got uh, Fenway off to the left side of the screen, and then as you come south or toward the bottom of the picture off of uh, Highway 97, that's where Hangar E or Hangar Echo it's uh, called, um, down that long driveway. Uh, some of those buildings have been removed since then. I have three things marked on there, a gate, uh, the bungalow, which is still in existence, and then the hangar itself. Um, the break-in, uh, we had one occur on November 7th, and uh, then uh, since that time, I understand the police have done some extra patrolling for us out there. Um, and then we had a second break-in that occurred on about uh, May 1st. And um, we've had uh, a heater and a generator stolen, probably 600 to 800 bucks worth of stuff out of there. Um, the optimum answer for us would be to electrify the building, and we could put in a cool camera, maybe put in some extra security lighting, whatever. Um, electrifying the building is about a $10,000 process. Um, but a uh, short-term answer could be as cheap as a $1,250 answer. Um, that's what it would cost to put a street light in at the northwest corner of Hangar Echo. Currently, there is a street light over the gate, um, which hasn't been working for a few months, but there is one up there. Um, the closest power and transformer is located at the end of the bungalow there. And so if we were to electrify that hangar, it would have to come from the bungalow down to the hangar. 
Um, but uh, a light could be ran. Uh, essentially, I would recommend taking the one off the gate and putting it up by the hangar, and hopefully that would uh, reduce things. Um, this has an impact of, oh, three or four of your residents, or five, one guy pays double. Um, and if you uh, had someone in your town come to you and ask you to put up a light or move a light 500 feet because they've had two break-ins, I would hope you would consider favorably of maybe spending the 1200 bucks and moving the light. And that's essentially what I'm asking for tonight. Um, I did ask with uh, Minnesota DOT, their aeronautics department. Um, they don't have emergency funding available for this sort of thing. They can put it in and perhaps do some funding looking at it in about a year from now when the CIP process goes through. But um, if it costs 1200 to put it in and we've already had six or 800 bucks worth of stuff stolen, it doesn't really merit waiting another year for us, I hope. Um, again, um, the police did do uh, some additional patrolling since the first break in, but it obviously wasn't enough uh, to stop the second one. And um, that's pretty much what I came for tonight. Uh, full disclosure, I have uh, asked the um, airport commission uh, previously about getting some gravel put around that same hangar. Um, so I've, I'm asking the city for some money. This is the second time I've came to ask, uh, but I don't know that that motion has come to you yet. Anyway, wanted to let you know that I'm asking you to spend some money out there on Hangar Echo. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. And Ron. Thank you, Ron Schaefer, Forest Lake. I'm listening to all these people that want stuff. Well, we got street lights all over the city. I can't see any from my house. We didn't used to pay for them. Now we are. I don't know why. Maybe you can give me an explanation how it benefits me. Uh, I can think about things that I complained about years ago when there was a, a lady councilman and I said, gee whiz, we never have police out by our house. I said, but when I come in the city, they're running around all over. She says, well, that's where the, that's where the taverns are. Now, I don't know, should we open up a tavern out where I live? I don't think there'd be enough people out there to support it. And uh, I'm thinking about all the other things that the city people got. They got parks. We don't have any out where I live. We got uh, walking trails. We don't have any. We have walking bridges. We don't have any of them either. And uh, I'm wondering why are we supporting them? Can you tell me that, anybody? I, I don't think you can, because the city people uh, are benefiting from this. We have buses running to the city. I've never ridden one. I've been out here 40 years and probably never will ride one. I drove 20 years into my job from here to St. Paul, where I worked. And I think we're starting to benefit people too much. Let's let people take care of themselves and not give them anything. The airport, I got a thing about that. Sell it. Let the people that buy it do whatever they want with it. They can put lights up all over the thing and they can put pavement all over they want. It, it won't affect me one way or the other. I'm never going to have an airplane and I'm never going to fly there. But let's start benefiting the people in the township. Everything seems to be going into the city. Nothing goes into the township. Thank you. All right, thank you. That ends the open forum. So we'll move on to uh, consent agenda. I'll look for an approval or changes there too. This way I make a motion that we'd approve the consent agenda as written. I had a few items to come off. Um, if you're open to a friendly okay. amendment, items A, B, and K. A, A, B, and what was the other one? K. A, B, and K. Is that okay with you then, Sam? I'll accept that amendment. All right, and we have a second on it. Any other changes? Uh, okay, hold on one second here. Was there one on... Uh, Paying a contractor, where do I say? That was K. That's the regular agenda, turn it over. 
The consent right there. That's off of there already. That's off. Okay. Yep. All right, I'll look for an approval of consent agenda, removing items A, B, and K for further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those are cleared. We'll take these one at a time. Item 6A. 6A, I just had a quick question on, there's two items for, um, large items for the Met, Met Council Environmental Services. One is for 118,000 and the other is 322,000. I just wanted clarification on what those were before we approve. Yeah, the uh, $322,000 one is for uh, sewer access charge, SAC charges, we get a lot of development that happened and that's what we, oh, they're just pass through funds, so we got charged out from that council, so that's what. The $322,000 one is, and the $118,000 one is the actual, just the bill that the Met Council charges us to process the sewer, the waste that gets sent downstream on the interceptor line. So that's just our monthly sewer bill. Is it monthly? Or is, our, is quarterly. Quarterly. The quarterly yeah. charge? Okay. Sorry about that. My, Thank you. Smoke. I make a motion that we approve um, city bills as indicated. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, item 6B. And item 6B, which is the city council meeting minutes, minutes from April 9th. Just a quick update. Um, the motion to airport lease rates, um, was a little clunky as written. And I thought it was worth clarification. Um, I'm sorry, let me get to this page. I believe it's on page 27. The motion as written in the minutes was give the recommendation back to city to determine with CPI number to be agreed upon by airport commission chair and staff. And I wanted us to just be clear that we were referring back to city and staff as well as the airport commission, the CPI rates. Dan, do you want to speak in there? That's the direction we took from city staff was basically take back the CPI determination back to the airport commission and work with them to have them, you know, I basically revamped the original memo, re clarified CPI, CPIU, and then brought that to the airport commission for consideration. Okay. But we're through the airport commission already, right? right? Yeah, this is the emotion that brought it back out of council, and that was okay. the direction that it was supposed to go back. Yep. And I, I think I think we've done the right thing. I think we just I just wanted the motion to be clear that we were referring back to staff for additional work. And I would make the motion the a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Way I remember it. Way I remember it was it was going to go back to to the airport commission. That was it. And I'm, what well, went back to staff and the airport commission, correct? Correct. Yeah. I, I was directed to go back to find CPIU along with the airport commission to make well, the. Yeah, the which other. we were going to find which CPI to use, and that was going to come from our financial. Correct. Right. So I would make a motion that we approve the amended minutes with that amendment made. The amendment of. I don't know what amendment because. <clears throat> That was what the motion was. We are going to be discussing that um, tonight anyway in the airport. Uh, lease uh, 7. Over to the 7. Which section are you specifically? So on page 27 of our packet, which are the minutes for April 9th. E. Item E. Okay. The word I'm troubled by is recommendation back to the city. We didn't send a recommendation back to the city. We referred action back to the city. I just wanted our, our action to be clear, which was we referred back to the city, back to city staff and the airport commission. So how do you want it to read specifically? Then you make a motion that includes how you want refer to the airport lease rates back to city staff and airport commission to determine which CPI to use. You want to please recommend with refer? I reworded a little bit, but that's the primary change, correct? I understand. All right, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. 
Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One abstaining. And one abstain. All right, and then item 6K, paved runway and parallel taxiway, pay request number eight. So this is the Dressel pay request. Um, if I'm reading this right, we are reducing to a retainage of 15,000. Is that correct? That's correct. That's, con that's basically representative of what they have left to do, which is basically, I think, some PAPI work that to confirm that they work. And we were holding too much retainage at like 65,000. The PAPI work is nowhere near that amount. So this brings us back in line with the remainder of the items that are on the list. That was exactly my question. I just wanted to confirm given I knew that there was work remaining, but wanting to make sure that this remaining 15,000 was still the right amount and that they had completed other items. That's that was correct. my concern. Okay. This has been an open item for quite some time, so I wanted Dan, to ask the question. Dan, does that retainer in any way affect the litigation that we have pending? It has no effect on that, and it's actually recommended that we actually get this taken care of um, because we can't, at this point, that's a separate issue from this retainage issue, so we need to get the retainage issue brought back in line with the work that's still left open. So is there no a, effect on litigation. Is there an expected completion date for everything? Uh, that's a good question. I, I actually asked a contractor when he planned on being able to finish his, we'll call it punch list work. Uh, he was out of town last week. Uh, he's going to try to get to as soon as possible, but uh, we all have him. We have him on a couple other projects in town, so obviously keep reminding him. And I would anticipate the work would be done no later than June because after that, then, you know, we kind of get into dry season two because there's a little bit of restoration on the north end drainage area for Rice Creek Watershed District requirements. So uh, a couple things to take care of, but uh, relatively minor. All right. Go ahead. So the remaining $15,000, that would be enough to cover those minor items? Nope. I think it's conservative, but it's better that be that way than low. All right. Still have a bond in place with the project too, so. But we're talking a couple little things here. Now, does that bond stay in place for a year after the project's complete, or how does that? We don't have to release the bond, correct? Or how do? I guess I haven't seen a bond release request come through before the council before, so. No, because this was done by a different firm. The project. I don't know exactly what's in the contracts, but typically, you, you know, you have a warranty a year after the project, right? Uh, if they don't honor it, then we've gone back before in the past and uh, used the bond company to make the corrections. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. <coughs> Any other discussion on this uh, item? If not, I'll look for a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the payment to Dressel. Second. Doctor. All right, item 6K. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that clears the consent agenda. Moving on to regular items. So, uh, meeting minutes. I thought we just approved those on the consent agenda. Uh, Mayor, members of council, March. the reason why these are there is that there is uh, a reason that the council members would have to abstain or weren't present at the meeting. So instead of trying to pull those off individual con consent agenda, we listed them as uh, the first uh, four items on the regular agenda. So that just kind of cleaned up the consent agenda approval a little bit. Okay. All right. I'd make a motion that we approve the city council meetings that took meeting minutes that took place on March 26, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. Okay. We've got one abstain and four Aye. yeses. Those are my yes. Sorry. All right. Let's try this again. Item 7B. I can make a motion that we approve the uh, City Council meeting minutes that, uh, of the meeting that took place April 2nd, 2018. Yeah. I have, a, I have a change to those meeting minutes. Um, I think there's, in the, our discussion section, which is in section six, um, discussion starts with actually what was the second act action of the night, which was my mo nomination for Don Steeler. 
um, the discussion section is missing Councilmember Husnick's initial um, nomination for Connie Gaboldi. Um, that is properly reflected down below in the voting section, but I think we should include that in the discussion just so there's clarity and consistency. I'll accept the amendment. All right. So we'll include I'll second that. the amended. I'll second the amended motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. And one abstain. Okay. We're rolling through this. So seven C, local board of appeals on April 9th. So I also have an, a change to these minutes. Sorry, guys. Um, Board of Appeals, um, Councilmember Bacchus is listed as, um, he's not listed on the um, roster for attendance, which I believe is correct, but he is listed in the absence as being absent when we adjourned. We should be consistent on those. So either he was, he, he didn't actually take office till later that evening, so. Sure. One of those sections should change. We we'll just remove the absent. You should come off of the absent section, correct. And with that, I'll make a motion we approve the amended minutes. All right. Um, and Sam, you agree to that uh, yeah. adjustment? Oh, I didn't right. make the motion on that one. Oh, who did make she's the motion? Making, she's making the oh, motion. Oh, you're making the motion. Yeah. I thought you seconded it. All right, looking for a second? I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. All right. So three and I carries. And workshop meeting minutes, April 16th, 7D. I make a motion we approve the workshop meeting minutes for April 16th. All right, uh, we have a motion. A second. And we have a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed <coughs> and abstain. Are you abstaining from that one? No, I'm not. I said I. Oh, okay. I only abstained from the other one because I wasn't present for those. Okay. 7E, Dan, do you want to take us through the airport lease adjustment? Oh, yeah. Mayor, members of the council, um, uh, during the May 2nd airport commission meeting, um, I brought back the um, lease rate adjustments um, to define the CPI to be used to make those adjustments and then based on that CPI um, we then adjusted lease rates back from 2007 to 2008 excuse me 2017 um, the CPI that was actually presented during the airport commission meeting was the Minneapolis St. Paul CPIU and if you look back in my memo that was originally sent out to the airport commission meeting um, that CPI covers approximately 89% of the population living within the Minneapolis St. Paul area. It covers Washington County as well. So it's the consumer price index that you would use um, for determining price increases in this area. Um, based on the CPIU, which the Airport Commission did recommend um, approval of as the CPI to ad use as lease rate adjustments, um, what we saw from 2008 to 2017 was a 14.491% increase in CPI. Um, and based on that uh, percent increase, you see um, lease rates adjusting on the non-commercial side to 10.3 cents per square foot. Um, and commercial lease rates would then adjust to 15.5 cents um, per uh, square foot. Um, at the airport commission meeting, they did recommend that both the CPIU um, be approved um, as the recommended CPI, and then they directed staff to go back with the accounting staff to make sure that we had the uh, lease increase correct and the correct lease, the new correct um, per square foot rates. Um, I did go back and met with the finance director to verify all my facts and figures and did get the, an email blessing saying that the numbers were correct. Uh, so they said the 10.3 and the 15.5 cents is accurate um, on a per square, per square foot basis. So what you have before you tonight is a resolution uh, 05-1418-02, uh, which does designate the Minneapolis-St. Paul CPIU as the airport CPI, and then adjusts the lease rates based on that CPI. Um, and the reasons why you have a resolution um, for this one is that to technically change the lease rates uh, requires an ordinance because an amendment to the ordinance because it is tied in with the fee schedule which is amended on, as, on an ordinance basis 
this resolution basically sets a, a, rec a record of that the council does desire to adjust these lease rates, and it also directs the next time we bring a fee schedule update that we will update the fee schedule so we can you know put these new uh, lease rates in that fee schedule. So instead of doing an ordinance amendment just simply for this, we're basically codifying or probably not the right technical term for it, but we're putting a basically a, a resolution on paper that says this is the, the clear marching orders for the direction we want for the airport lease rates, and then the next time the fee schedule comes forward, we will bring those forward as part of a fee schedule update. So at this point, if uh, the recommended action would be to uh, approve resolution uh, 0514-18-02, which would adjust the lease rates to as it presented. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on the CPI or the proposed lease rate adjustments. Thank you, Dan. Any questions for Dan or staff? I've got one. Um, I understand the intent. I think everybody does. The one thing I see not clarified on here is the fact that we adjust these lease rates every two years. And I think that we need to clarify just because there's been so many issues, the fact that the lease would be an aggregate of those two years, not just one of the years, or doubling one of the years. Because we could have a scenario where one year it goes up 10 or 12 percent, the next year it could go down 3 percent. And then we're going to get into um, you know, that discussion, well, it, you know, it's not right. But if we can put in there um, that it's an aggregate of or average of those two years, I think it'll it'll just keep an issue from cropping up later. Mm -hmm. and, and that then, yeah, that that would be consistent with what we did with the last lease rate adjustment. We basically just ran the the starting CPI and the finishing CPI and figured out the percentage increase. So, in your example, if you did see a big increase in one year and a, and a reduction in the rest, because even through the 2008 through 2017, there was a couple of years where CPI actually did decrease in there as well. Mm -hmm. That was all factored when we actually set the whole, we start the start and the ending number. So that would be, doing that would be consistent with how this was determined. So the next time you take, you take the CPI for 18, CPI for 19, determine what the next lease rate adjustment would be, which would be, again, consistent with how this last one was, was determined. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a good clarification as well. Um, right. Anything we can do to make this more clear and to recognize that it's an annual number and we are taking an aggregate of a two-year period, I think is good. All right. Any other? Go ahead. The only other comment I would make is that going forward, we do it every two. And that, I think that one went from 2008 to 2016 before anything was adjusted. Mandatory every two years. Just looking back at the two years. Yeah, look, yeah, take yeah. just Which, the last two. I agree with that as well. I mean, we, we could look back at the last 20 and try and average it every time, but let's just, the two years from the, or from whatever that last rate increase was. Correct. Correct. Which hopefully I'm just saying we should years. do it. Uh -huh. Mandatory that every Yeah, mandatory, not, not skip every it. Every two years, no. not Correct. rate. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I'd like to see yeah, that's a good input. There too. Thank you. One other question for Dan, or maybe it's a request. Um, there's a, the, the language is in here for the $280 per unit. As we know, that's been a contentious conversation over the over the last year. Um, if we could have an update at our at an upcoming meeting, if we could probably a closed session to talk about status of arbitration or status of mediation, um, just so we can council can get an update on that and then consider um, in the future what we want to do with that $280. Now you're talking closed session for the ongoing lawsuit, just to clarify people in the audience, close, not just correct. be specific correct. for that, that one ordinance. I would, correct. I would say a closed session to get an update on where we are with the mediation, because um, in, in my mind that is a prerequisite before we consider doing anything different with the $280, which I know there's some in the audience that have that question out there. Um, Maybe Bridget can speak to this, but rather than having closed session, would Dan be able to, or uh, somebody just be able to individually um, have consultation with the council members as to where that's at? Because I'm not really sure if a closed session to update at this point is beneficial in the long run. 
I think just a point of a point of a clarification on a closed session for the mediation. It's probably recommended just to get everybody, because I think we're you know potentially making some decision points here. What, what are the next steps? So it would be advantageous to get the council in the room with the legal counsel at that point, just to kind of lay out what are the options, because there are multifaceted options that can be done at this point. Um, to get a resolution to this, so I probably would be advantageous to have a closed session just so we can get um, some clear direction as to what direction council wishes to go with the, with the mediation. The, the, right. point, the point I want to make about this whole thing, that, uh, that $280 that, you know, that's been imposed on the hangar owners has nothing to do with that airport overrun, absolutely nothing. And the fact that it keeps getting brought up that way is, is just isn't right. I mean, there, there, there was, we had an opportunity to stop that from happening in the first place, and it didn't even come to us for a vote, and that's the pro problem with it. It has nothing to do with the hangar owners. And so the, the idea that uh, we have to wait until that's clarified is not right, it just isn't right. Yeah, I, I don't think it does, and that's why I wanted to bring that up. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I yeah. do believe they're two different, completely separate issues anyway. It is. And I just wanted to. Your Honor, so to respond to your question directly, we, I would defer to litigation counsel just as far as updates are concerned and because they're handling that matter mm -hmm. to speak on that piece. And then just to clarify kind of what this resolution is trying to do, because I know it's do, trying to do a lot of things. Um, I mean, there are really two things that are happening here. The first is that it's trying to designate the Minneapolis-St. Paul CPIU as that as official CPIU as referenced in the use rate. So that's sort of the first thing that the resolution does. And then the second thing it does is to adjust the lease rates effective uh, July 1st, I believe it is, and that's finance director is requesting that something be in writing so they can adjust those. And what I'm hearing the council say is that there wants to be, there's like some clarification, council would like clarification regarding how these rates will be adjusted going forward. And this is where it gets complicated because the city has all these different leases with all these different airport hangar tenants and they're all different depending on when they were executed. Uh, but they all reference this periodic readjustment, so perhaps clarification can be made to amend number three to indicate that the adjusted lease rates listed above will be effective as of July 1st, 2018, and will be reevaluated and readjusted effective July 1st of 2020, just to clarify that, again, this will come up in 2020. Uh, I'm not sure if that encapsulates the council's that's, intent, but... Yeah, that's always the way it's been, though, really. Or can we just put, yeah. like, a biannual... <coughs> Reevaluated biannually thereafter. Ed, go ahead. The other thing I think we should add to it is that right now we finally, after all this time, said it's the CPIU, but CPIU as of next year is going to have a new name. So I think we should put that in there. I also think we have a point in time though that we can go back to as it adjusts out. So the next one won't be. You know, it'll be a year after that, so it's going to be pretty easy to draw the like, comparison. You know, just I mean, yeah. in case, just in case they do make a CPI change, you know, they just say that they're going to they're going to name it X, Y, or Z. But if they decide at the last point until it's official, you know, until the official name change happens, they already got the name in there. They do. All right. Going forward, the new name, just so everybody understands, it's the same as the CPIU. Somewhere in the bottom. <clears throat> All right. I'll look for a motion. <coughs> Anybody want to make a I, motion? I would make the motion, except I'd, I would rather uh, abstain from. Uh, Bridget, could you rephrase the language you proposed for item three there? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I did suggest or recommend that the language in item three could be re revised to read, the adjusted lease rates listed above will be effective as of July 1st, 2018, and will be re-evaluated and readjusted uh, effective July 1st, or going forward, effective July 1st of each year going forward, or there was recommendation biennially thereafter, either or. That's fine. I, I think that's clearly uh, stated in um, the leaseholders' contracts as well. So um, it, it's fine to have it in there. Yeah. Um, but I'll make a motion to uh, amend the resolution as stated. As Bridget just stated? Correct. All right. 
So we have a motion. I have a second. All right, we're getting there. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. One abstain. All right, thank you. And the Fenway Land Exchange. Is that Bridget or Dan or who's? I think it's a little bit of all of us. So I will kind of kick off the discussion this evening regarding the land exchange piece. You have a number of uh, materials in your packet, Mayor, members of the council, related to a proposed development called Headwaters Place. There are really two different sets of approvals that the council is being asked to consider this evening. There are a variety of land use and zoning related approvals that Donovan will take you through in a few minutes. But first and foremost is the initial matter before the council, which is a proposed land exchange between the city and Fenway Investments. So I think if you can pull up the map, Donovan. Thank you. Uh, looking the map on page, for your exhibit, the map? Uh, the graphic okay, sure. on page 113. While he's loading it, I can kind of talk the council through it. So uh, previously, the council was approached by uh, Fenway Investments regarding a proposed land exchange. The city owns a large outlot called, called Outlot E, which abuts a parcel owned by Fenway Investments. Both are located within the Headwaters PUD master plan area. The city uh, owns, again, Outlot E, and uh, Fenway Investments is seeking to exchange a portion of that city-owned Outlot E for a parcel of property located adjacent to Fenway Athletic Complex north of the area. Uh, the proposal is essentially an even exchange, meaning there's no money that's contemplated to exchange hands. Rather, the city would deed to Fenway Investments a 4.22 acre parcel of uh, portion of Outlot E, which is shown essentially in the yellow on the diagram and the visual in front of you, in exchange for the brown parcel to the north. The purchase agreement, or I should say land exchange agreement, uh, contemplates that Fenway Investments would pay for all of the costs associated, essentially all of the costs associated with the transfer, including fees and, and things of that nature. I would note that the proposed closing is in August of this year, and this agenda item was sent down to Planning Commission for its review and consideration and feedback prior to or in conjunction with the land use approvals. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions the council has regarding the terms of the proposed land exchange. I would note that there is a resolution in your packet on page 117 uh, that references the exhibits, which are the land exchange agreement. There's a new version that was provided to you just today. Uh, that was a result of the developer giving that information to the city just today. And it references, again, the Planning Commission's review of the proposed land exchange and its written findings uh, that the proposed land exchange in conjunction with the land use approvals being sought are in compliance uh, with the city's comprehensive plan, both the city disposition of the property and city acquisition of the property. The proposed resolution would authorize the land exchange uh, as contemplated in the terms of the agreement and authorize the execution of the necessary closing documents by the mayor and city staff. So with that, I stand for any questions related to the land exchange component of the transaction. Thank you, Bridget. Any questions for Bridget on this? Fine. All right, uh, so take it to Donovan or Dan, or who's doing the next portion of this? I think we're contemplating um, have a vote approving on the land one? yes exchange agreement first and then moving into the zoning if, with council's approval. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 05-15-1803. I believe our packet has a, an incorrect resolution number. 05-15, it says 08, it should be 1803. Can we have a motion? Second. <clears throat> I'll second it. All right, I'll open this up for any further discussion. Um, the one concern I have on this is just with houses being built there next to the airport, um, how do we document that, you know, these buyers and obviously everybody knows there's an airport there, but um, once, you know, homeowners move in there and say, boy, it's so noisy here, you got to do something or we're going to 
you know, sue you or do this or that. And I'm just wondering what type of notice, document, something in, in the provisions here that say that the buyers are fully aware this is next to a municipal airport. I, I agree with you, Ben, and I think that uh, the developers have to acknowledge, at least acknowledge that. One thing that's going to happen in that other area there, too, is a, a four, what is it, four-story apartment building. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The noise isn't going to be the issue. What's going to be the issue is the lighting. That beacon is going to swing beacon through there. Off of there. Be, and then on the end of those run, on the end of the runway, on both ends, there's a, 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 a thing called reels, runway end identification lights, and they're very bright strobe lights that are uh, operated by the pilot. You can turn them on. They run until you land, and they're probably, I don't know what, 15 minute or whatever they run, but they're a very powerful strobe light. They're going to be shining right in those windows. And uh, I know that the engineers have said, oh, yeah, this is all great. It's under the overlay and all this other stuff, but um, uh, it's going to be an issue, and, and somebody just has to acknowledge that it's going to be an issue. Yes. Donovan, what was the discussion at Planning Commission on this? Um, uh, we, did, we did hear the te public testimony that those lights are an issue um, at that time. The, I mean, zone, the Planning Commission um, basically they acknowledged that but didn't ch make, change any recommendations involving the actual you know, approval conditions. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was at that meeting. I just asked for the developers to acknowledge that that could be an issue. Yep. So I was the one that made that statement. Okay. So to follow on that, maybe the question for staff is, where is the best place in this process for us to get acknowledgement of that in, or to request that? Um, we're kind of I'm, sitting in the land exchange portion of the agenda. I have a sense it's probably more in the project portion, but um, the question is a good one, and I guess I wonder where does that best belong? Well, and I don't want to get halfway through it and then have to. Yeah. Right. I, I believe the best place for it would be in the plat, which is the final resolution. Um, in your packet, the one ending in 06. Um, th there's a series of conditions there um, related to the, the platting, and that's you know, involving the creation of the, the twin home lots. And uh, there is an HOA contemplated. Um, and so the city often does you know, re require the submission, submittal of those HOA organizational documents. Mr. Pratt, would you like to yes. speak, please? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I have, a, I have a recommendation. Mayor and members of the council, in the developer's agreement, I think is where to put it. You know, okay. it's acknowledged. That's fine. I just, yeah. Before we go down this path, and it, it's been yeah. good to work with you, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. You know, I don't want to yep. get beyond where we should and then have to backtrack on something. And I appreciate that. I do. And, you know, the provision here is to, um, the, you know, I've got some experience in remodeling houses down in, you know, near the Metropolitan Airport and the kind of windows you might put in. All those sorts of things will be uh, recommended, you know, mm -hmm. sound deadening. Sure. And... Um, I think the developer's agreement is where to put it. All right. Yep. Mr. Pratt, I thank you, because that... Uh... Now, Sam, these reels that are on the end, mm -hmm. um, are there shielding on the back side of them or anything? Well, or... from the back side, there isn't much. As it's, it's a kind of a straightforward thing. There's, there's a pair of them on each end of the runway. Mm -hmm. and but on a foggy night or anything else? You're gonna yeah, somebody, if it's a little bit, you know, um, we're, we're certainly not an instrument-rated airport at the time, but... Uh, people still use them even uh, when it's VFR because it does show you right where the, where the threshold is. And uh, they're a very powerful strobe light. And if, if you ever see them, if you're going down 61 and they happen to be on, you're going to know it. Okay. And I don't, you know, like in Mr. Pratt's uh, development, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal as it is to that apartment that's proposed in that next parcel there. You know, he does have some trees there that are kind of shielding that area there, but... Uh, we're all aware of it, for certainly. So, all right. So we have a motion and a second for the uh, land exchange. I do believe. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? And abstain? Motion carries. So we'll take it on to the second portion of it. Uh, Mayor, members of council, I'd like to present the multiple applications to create what's essentially a 30 twin home lot development, residential development. Um, as uh, the city attorney showed, the, um, and I'll show it again just for your reference, where, the, where this parcel is on the southern end of the uh, approach zone of the, the municipal airport um, with the transit center, wide, um, service center, and the YMCA to the south and trailside apartments there as well. Um, to actually uh, affect this subdivision, um, a series of uh, applications improve a lot line adjustment, which would uh, merge the, the, um, the land change parcel to the wooded area to the, uh, the currently owned multiple family, currently um, private home owned multiple family lot. Comprehensive plan amendment, which I'll, I'll de detail these a little bit uh, later here. The zoning map amendment, preliminary PUD amendment, that's planning and development amendment, and a preliminary plat application, which is subdividing the property. Um, City Council has uh, reviewed this in a couple of workshops um, last summer into fall and the uh, approved the concept plan in January of this year. Um, at, the, at, at the April 25th Planning Commission meeting, um, the Planning Commission did recommend City Council approval of the applications. And you know, to explain a little further on exactly what we mean by the, um, the, the zoning map and um, future land use ch comprehensive plan um, changes. You can see the existing conditions here on your left. Outlaw H, that's the Pratt Homes parcel. Outlaw E is the city owned parcel. And what the proposal is, is to then change, put this into, um, into pr uh, Pratt Home ownership and then rezone this all the shaded area to MXR1 or a future land use of um, low medium density residential. And so that's the, that's the end game. Then more specifically, the, um, the, uh, the, the project area is about 11.8 acres. This is for the subdivision plat. Um, and we have a mixture of zoning districts including industrial, multiple family, headwaters, PUD, and airport overlay. Um, the comprehensive land use plan, that's in the comprehensive plan, is high density residential and park and recreation. And what's sought here is for the comp, comp plan amendment is to change the future land use category um, from, for the city owned property from park and recreation to low medium density residential. And that rear part of the Pratt Homes land from high density residential to low medium density, re density residential. Again, this is for the, the twin home development. And similarly for the zoning map amendment, um, change the um, zoning from industrial to, to the MXR1 single and townhouse residential, and then from multiple family to, again, the MXR1. The, um, the planned unit development amendment is for the original headwaters amendment that was adopted, passed in 2006. What's proposed here for the twin home development is a change in building setbacks, in which these largely mirror um, what we've seen in Headwaters 11, where there is similar um, single single level town um, homes that have they've received a preliminary plat approval from council. Um, for this, um, they propose a front loaded townhome that, that's vehicle access from the front with you know, garages facing the street, um, which the original um, Headwaters cons uh, master PUD did not have this type of building. And then a change from um, minimum lot size and width to, to a 5,000 square foot lot at the minimum 32 um, foot width. And then also it proposed a parking standard, which is two enclosed and two off street, you know, basically driveway parking spaces, which also is compatible with single family homes throughout the, um, the city in the zoning code. Um, one thing, if you notice, 
Um, also, I want to mention that the uh, resolutions that you received in the packet um, differ in one aspect with the exhibit. And this is a, um, you received a paper copy this evening. Um, the actual um, land exchange parcel is 4.22 acres, as the city attorney mentioned. Um, provide a little uh, clarification on that. And at this point, um, since council has received uh, information on this over the last year or so, I'd like to um, uh, basically um, you know, leave that, uh, not talk more about the project, but, but mention that if the council is entertaining motions to go in specific order that relate to the kind of the overall um, you know, from general to spe specific. Um, so to start with motion, start with um, resolution ending 04, and then the ordinance, and that relates to the comp plan amendment. Then the ordinance number 674, which relates to the zoning map amendment. Then the, uh, the resolution 05 that relates to the plan unit development uh, amendment. And then 06, which relates to the preliminary plat, um, you know, uh, passing, you know, adoption. And of course, um, if I could, re you know, if I could remind you that uh, that would be where any sort of changes to, to, to the development agreement uh, would be the best place to include that as an additional condition of approval. So with that, I'd like to take any questions from City Council. Can you just go back to the slide where we're amending the, the acreage, the zoning? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, one the other way. Yes. This one? Um, well, I, I guess my question is we're amending that. Are we amending um, Mr. Pratt's parcel that we're taking in exchange? Or is that staying in industrial or? Um, yes, that's the, the, this zoning map amendment, comp plan amendment, do not do not involve that property. So it's, it's currently zoned industrial with airport overlay, and that's how it's proposed to remain. Okay. Um, I guess that can be done at a later date, but I don't see any logic in keeping that industrial um, at its location. So. Um, maybe we need to put that on a workshop or something or just look at when we can change that to sure all right I'll look for motions or questions or answers I feel like this has been well workshopped and kind of well discussed as we've gone through so I don't have a lot of questions we may need questions for staff um, I, I like it. I mean, I, Mr. Pratt, you've been really good to work with on this one. Thank you. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about the product at the single level down home. Uh, it seems like there's a good demand for it. We were just discussing that at the EDA a little bit earlier. So um, I, I think it'll work out well. Um, I, I think it should work out well for everybody. Um, I, I do want to talk to Ryan a little bit because not this, but Forest Road North itself actually seems to be getting so much more traffic on it than um, Headwaters Parkway, and I'm just wondering if there's, you know, any way we can get people to actually um, go to the stoplight and use Headwaters Parkway, uh, or if it's just more a product of having that develop more. But uh, by far at night, I see so many vehicles on on Forest Road, and that's fine. But that really wasn't the intent intention of that and you know, that's a discussion for further down I don't want to put you on the spot right now but uh, for us to actually get uh, Headwaters Parkway growing and developing it'd be nice to get a lot more wheels on that one and lose those traffic counts so back to the land exchange any further questions or can we get a motion on that I'll kick us off with a motion to approve resolution 05, 14, 18, and 04. We'll second that motion. The first, I believe. All right. Now, this this is just for the land exchanges itself. Is that what you're saying? It was at the motion? 
This is adopting a comprehensive plan amendment. I'm going to vote no on that simply because we just did this recently where we turned down a zoning tax amendment here about a month ago. It has nothing to do with uh, Mr. Pratt's project. It has nothing to do with with uh, his product. It's, it's so because of the consistency of, of uh, how we vote. For clarification on that note, right now this is just to amend this parcel, not change the language of everything zoned that way, correct? Correct. All right. Any further discussions? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And abstain. All right. Motion carries. On to the second. I lost my spot here. Donovan, just doing a quick place check. The next, the next step would be approving Ordinance 674, correct? Correct. Which is the zoning code related to the zoning maps. I will follow then with make a motion that we approve Ordinance 674. All right, we have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And abstain. Ordinance approved. Now we're on to C, motion to approve resolution 0514-1805, approving the preliminary PUD amendment. Now the development agreement, Donovan, will come to us later. Yeah, within the plat um, approval, there's a specific line that relates to conditions related to financials, and um, I believe that's the best place for it, mm -hmm. and other required city documents. Okay. And... The HOA, do we have anything to do with that as well? The city often does request those organizational documents, and I find it helpful to have it as part of a record, but it's essentially a private contract, you know, between the developer and, and buyers. Um, but, uh, you know, it's certainly, as, you know, as, as part of a uh, subdivision, I believe the city, you know, to protect public health and welfare, um, it's, a, it's a good option, I believe, to... In, include some sort of acknowledgement so that, um, well, I get fewer calls for, for noise. And essentially, I think the noise ordinance is not restrictive enough to actually prohibit any sort of airport flight, mm -hmm. airport activity like that. Um, but, you know, I believe it's just to make sure that it's, it's acknowledged that this is a pre-existing condition and, and buyers are buying into this, you know, location that has an airport there for the foreseeable future. All right. Thank you. Any, any discussion? And if not, I'll look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 05-14-1805, approving preliminary PUD amendment. Thank you, Blake. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And last one. Motion to approve resolution 05-1406, approving the preliminary plat for the headwaters plat with all staff conditions. I'd be interested in staff's recommendation of a revision to accommodate language for acknowledgement of the airport. That would be in the development agreement. Yes, that's what, that was my understanding. Not in the preliminary plat, but in the actual development agreement when they come back. Got it. And, okay. Diamond, you didn't reference any edits to this particular resolution? No, um, but the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, and we don't, perhaps there's language we could add that does relate to the, um, you know, maybe there's an additional whereas. We often don't work with resolutions. We want to do it this time to get everything specific. So perhaps the city attorney could um, help us here on this one. Certainly. So the 
resolution you have in your packet was prepared by my office to just formalize and explain what we're doing and to provide a written record as to the city's approval of the preliminary plat. As you know, the preliminary plat approval is essentially final plat approval. So if a final plat comes forward and it's consistent with what's been presented to the council as far as the preliminary plat is concerned, and the issues are addressed as indicated in the uh, city engineer's letter, you know, that's kind of what the city's looking at. So it's an important step in the process for the council to consider and determine if the preliminary plat meets all of the requirements of city code related to planning. My understanding in speaking with staff is that there are 66 conditions which are listed in uh, the engineer's letter dated April 18th. So the proposed approval of the preliminary plat is subject to addressing all of these conditions. These do include execution of a development uh, agreement and a few other issues there. But if there are considerations or concerns council has, it would be good to flesh those out with the city engineer and zoning administrator at this time. Okay. So of those 66 conditions, noise is not one of them at this present time. Not that I recall, Ryan. I don't think that's any mentioned anywhere in that letter. I did not comment on that. Well, noise and or lighting, because it almost sounds like the lighting right. might become right. more of an issue. So yep. if I understand you right, the time to do it is now. Is that correct? So I think, Mayor, members of the council, I think the issue is you want, that the, you want to ensure that individuals who are purchasing property are aware that there's an airport and airports come with noise and light. So what I have heard the conversation to date is that as part of the development agreement, and the developer appears to indicate that he's amenable to this, that the future development of those properties, purchasers of the property will be advised in some form, you're adjacent to an airport, there is noise, there are lights, essentially a buyer beware. So in the development agreement we can put something, and I understand that he's agreeing to this right here on the spot, that will indicate he'll provide buyers information related to the existing airport and some of those considerations. So. Uh, I don't think it necessarily has to be a condition at the addendum to these conditions, which relate primarily to the technical specifications of the plan itself, uh, but we can certainly incorporate it into a development agreement. Sure. But at the present time, there's nothing like Mr. Pratt suggested that the developer put in a certain guy in the window because it avoids more noise. That's not in any of this. No, so what, again, what you're reviewing here is a preliminary plat approval, which is really the subdivision of the land itself. So while you're approving how the land can be divided and you've amended the PUD to incorporate the types of uses that can be on the land, all of those design specifications, that is not before you as part of the preliminary PUD approval this evening. So but will come to us at a future meeting, correct? those items were, would be yet to come in that next phase. And so the items we are concerned about tonight, we have opportunity to address at a future meeting. So in specific, if you're talking about the notification piece, then yes, that will come before you in the development agreement. So in the development agreement, we can put out information about the notification requirement that's being requested by the city. And certainly, uh, since that's out there, I would assume individuals who are potentially purchasing a product uh, either directly from a developer or whoever they're going to, I don't know what the plan is if you're going to build them or sell them off or have somebody else build them and sell them. In any event, there will be some notification to the purchaser about this property and hopefully it will end up reaching the end user and I would assume that that might be used to facilitate design discussions uh, related to the windows or any improvements that the buyer might want to buy or make to the unit that they're purchasing when they're designing that unit. And those details, when presented to the Planning Commission, that's the time they would come forward, right? As the city could recommend that we have soundproof windows at that time. So at this point, you're really, again, focusing on the subdivision <coughs> of the land. This isn't the time to be talking about building specifications. One no, no, I understand that, but at a later date, I when they actually put the proposal of what kind of building's going there and all that. Well, it's already been kind of touched on in the preliminary PUD approval, or excuse me, in the PUD amendment, the twin home concept that's going through. I mean, Ryan, I don't know if there's any in Donovan at, I mean, at the building permit polling stage or anything like that. That's not usually, Donovan, I'm getting the finger pointed at Donovan. I don't know, you know how that information is conveyed, but really the type of windows you're going to put in is ultimately up to the end user or the developer. 
So to the extent that the city wants to be able to point back to uh, something that the council did and said we really want to make sure that the buyer is aware of it, I think the best we can really do at this point is incorporate that notification piece into the development agreement. Yeah. I, thank you, Bridget. Um, I guess my my concern was noise to begin with, but um, since we have a new item, these reels going in at the airport, um, are they on the ground or are they on stand? Yeah, yeah they're, they're ground level. At the yeah, end of the runway? Right, at the end of the runway and they're just so, like two big headlights. It's so big question is, can there be some shrubbery, something behind them, between them and the apartment building? I mean, the closer we get some type of screening to that light, I th the I th more it would block it from the building. I, I, I think it just, if, if you're going to do that, it would, it would have to go next to the development. It would have to be off the airport right. property. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, but, again, you know, I, don't think, would never, I don't think they were aware of it. It's probably typical yeah, at airports, I, but yeah. Um, and I, it probably isn't going to be that big an issue anyway. No, I think it's just something yeah. that people need to be aware of. It's like mm -hmm. taking your picture, you know, every three seconds, you know. Right. Kind of thing, so. Okay. Well, as long as the developer is aware of it um, and, you know, it's acknowledged, I mean, I I don't really think we need to um, put any additional costs on construction. But No, he's just, I mean, he's certainly willing to put it in the development agreement, so mm -hmm. it's just an awareness okay. thing. Yeah. Any other thoughts or questions? Oh, they're already swapping land on next to the airport property. I think it's kind of assumed they got this. Correct, yeah, I think so. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve resolution 0515-1806, which is the preliminary plat. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, clarification, that is the correct number. Uh, it's incorrect on the agenda. Yeah, the correct. Zero five fourteen eighteen zero six. That's what I got. Yeah, yeah that was correct. It was the one before that that was incorrect. It's mistyped in the packet. Yeah, in the no. summary document. So, uh, yeah, on that resolution number itself is correct. Yeah. And to be clear, it's the it's the plat resolution. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And abstain. No. Motion carries. All right. That seemed way more complicated than it should have been. That was partly my fault. There's no question about that. But, you know, when it says zoning map amendment, that's an amendment to the zoning. I don't care how you slice it. All right. Um, massage ordinance revision. Bridget. Thank you, Your Honor. Mayor, members of the council, uh, before you this evening for your consideration is ordinance number 675, uh, which makes some adjustments to the city's existing massage uh, therapy business and massage therapist licensing <coughs> provisions in the city code. Uh, this item was brought to the council's attention in workshop back in January. Uh, there was a kind of wholesale revision of the code that was brought forth uh, subsequently and council direction to staff was to really take a look at the proposed ordinance and focus and hone in on the public safety aspects and how could the ordinance be revised to best meet the needs of the city from a public safety standpoint, both from a licensing perspective and from a law enforcement perspective. So with that direction in mind, uh, we took a look at the proposed ordinance revisions uh, Chief Peterson and I had a conversation. Uh, he provided his input about what he thought were the most significant proposed revisions. And from that conversation and discussion came the proposed ordinance before you for consideration this evening. Uh, the proposed ordinance does uh, attempt to address some of the concerns that were raised by number one, uh, adding additional language, requesting information about previous license suspensions or revocations for applicants for licenses from the city. Uh, by adding in language that would allow uh, the denial of a license if a person has certain types of uh, criminal convictions and has not shown competent evidence of sufficient rehabilitation as required by statute in order to have that license issued. The application process is clarified uh, in the sense that before it was a little unclear, the license kind of went to the city 
clerk, and then maybe it went to the council, and it was unclear who was issuing the license, but because of the discretionary components that necessarily go into granting these licenses, which include this consideration of are you of good moral character, or have you shown sufficient evidence of rehabilitation, these discretionary decisions are not ones that can be delegated to the city clerk, so therefore all massage therapists and therapy uh, businesses, their licenses will come before the council for approval. We also clarified what the process looks like for suspension or revocation of those licenses if they fail to comply with the terms and conditions of the license, which do include remaining law abiding. We added in some language that prohibits uh, advertising of illegal or erotic content or conduct at the license premises as part of the conditions of the license to give law enforcement and the city a tool if you see ads, for example, on Backpage.com or other places where the services that are being advertised appear to imply prostitution-related services to say, hey, this is a violation of your license, and that then can serve as a tool to gain compliance. Uh, I would also note that there were a number of provisions that were removed. Some of these had to do with information that we don't request. So I confirmed with the city clerk, we don't ask information about kind of the business location. We don't look at the lease for the property. We don't ask about the creditor information. We're not collecting it, so we shouldn't have it in our code saying we're collecting it. Uh, and then some of the last provisions in the ordinance were repealed related to kind of the criminal penal penalties and things like that. And that's really a, a style of preference. There is a general penalty section in the city code which makes everything a misdemeanor unless determined otherwise. So any violation of this code, even though we're repealing the language in the section that says it's a misdemeanor, is still a misdemeanor. So again, essentially the proposed ordinance provisions seek to provide law enforcement and the city with those tools to focus on the public safety and health safety and welfare aspects of regulating these types of businesses. I did include in your packet two different documents for your review. Exhibit A shows the uh, removals and the proposed revisions to the city code in line, so you can see them in the broader context of all the other licensing provisions. Just for ease of reference, the second document, which is the actual ordinance itself, is what the council is being asked to review and consider this evening, which again shows specifically the information of the wording that has been removed and that's been proposed for inclusion. Uh, so with that, I'd stand for any questions from your honor and the council. Thank you, Bridget. I think you did a really good job with the revisions. Um, I would like to see one change on here. The hours of operation. Um, the 8 a.m. seems not really uh, modern. I mean, I, I would like to see 6 a.m. as a starting time. Um, I think there's a lot of people that would, if it was available, like to get a massage before they head out to work. Um, so, and whether 9, 10, the closing time could be debatable, but um, I think that at least providing that to the people that are working and receiving that uh, would be good. Any other comments? I wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. I just go ahead. I, I agree. I, I did have a question related to the penalty phase, but um, our, Bridget answered that, so thank you. Um, what type of uh, time when they apply um, to processes? Is there a, is there a time limit? Uh, Thirty days or? May I remember to the council, there's not a set time limit and the city has to act on an application. It's not like a zoning application where there's a 60-day rule deadline, but the city can't drag its feet and if someone's applying for a license, a lot of it would probably depend on the background check and whether that's in-state or out-of-state. And I don't know if uh, city clerk or interim city administrator has a sense of how long it takes the city from a practical standpoint when you get an application. I would probably say we process them as quickly as possible. Um, we try to... If an application were to come in tomorrow, let's say, we would try to get processed and prepared for the next council agenda. And we typically look at, you know, when that is. There's certain ones that come in. If they come in two days before the next council meeting, usually we can't get all that back work done, but we try to process them as, as quickly as possible. We're not typically sitting on them for, for two weeks, so we're kind of, you know, as quickly as we can turn them over, we, we turn them over. I, I guess the reason I'm asking, too, is, you know, for the therapists themselves that are looking to start a job, it would be tough to have to wait a month to you know, without an income or, or whatnot. 
I do have a couple questions. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, did we reach out to um, the folks that are out there already? We have a couple of legitimate businesses here doing massage. And did they have any comments or any feedback on any of this at all? Or? Yeah, they were provided with the proposed changes as well as the current ordinance. And I believe one business got back to us um, with their thoughts, and I mm -hmm. shared that one we did. Okay, so they were for or against or... So to, to clarify that, that reach, uh, outreach occurred after kind of the original uh, council work session and broader discussion. So when we were looking at a, a larger revision, proposed revision of the ordinance, and a lot of the comments were related to uh, things such as the uh, age of people working at the business. In particular, it was a salon that wanted some clarification about the salon business aspect versus the massage business aspect. So their comments were incorporated into kind of the broader original ordinance review. Uh, I, I don't believe any of the comments that I recall are implicated by what's being proposed here. Yeah, okay. All right. And then the second question would be to Chief Peterson. I mean, is this ordinance help or hurt you in any way? Uh, it helps. Yeah, it definitely helps from a law enforcement uh, standpoint. I mean, it sure seems like a common sense thing. I just would have wanted to make sure that everybody was on board with it. Yeah, yep. It's definitely a positive change. Just like with any city policies or ordinances, they need to be um, reviewed every so often, you know, every couple of years. And this one definitely needs to be uh, updated. And I think uh, city attorney did an excellent job. Those are the only questions I had. Thank you. One last question for me, I guess, and just trying to expedite the process, too. Um, if somebody meets all the requirements, uh, can the city just issue them a license? Why does that have to come back through the council? It seems like um, an extra step that really isn't necessary. If they're qualified and they, they meet all staff requirements, why can't we just issue them a license so they can start the next day? You'd like to see it on a shall issue? What's that? You'd like to see it on a shall issue basis? Yeah, I, I would I would like to at least have that discussion. I mean, there's a lot of legitimate, you know, people working in that business, and why should we delay them for our next council meeting, which could be a couple of weeks? And we can't do it on a workshop, so, you know, it could be a big gap sometimes. John, if I can speak to that kind of question, I think the issue here is that under state statute, while the clerk is authorized to issue a number of licenses, they need to be kind of a straightforward one where if you meet all of the requirements such as a dog license or something like that, then the issue, the license shall issue. So there's no kind of discretionary component. The challenge here and why this license falls into the category of uh, liquor licenses, tobacco licenses, things that the council is supposed to approve is that you have these criteria, for example, that they don't have any prior criminal history that would disqualify them. It requires the exercise of discretion. And the council really can't delegate the exercise of its discretion to staff. So that's a determination the council needs to make. Uh, and again, it's, I understand it makes perfect sense when it's a clear, straightforward, you know, business license application, why there would be a delay. But it's more the matter of when you get into these criteria that implicate discretion or require the council to exercise its authority, where the council needs to be making that decision as opposed to the clerk, which is why the process was clarified the way it was. Okay. And there's no ability to enter, uh, like, a interim or a two-week license or anything by staff, it, it has to go through council. I'm not, Your Honor, I'm, I'm not sure of how that process would work. I think the bigger challenge here is if you issue the license without, I mean, without really applying the criteria and then you're trying to revoke it, it makes yeah. more sense to just have it all done at once. All right. That clarifies it for me. Thank you. Mark? Um, no further questions. Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we approve Ordinance 675 as amended with the 6 a.m. start time. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Dan, 7-9, interim accounting clerk. Hiring. 
Uh, members of the council, um, I have a higher recommendation for you tonight for the intermediate, intermediate accounting clerk position. Um, we received over 30 applications for the open position, ran them through, um, you know, ranked the candidates, ran through testing, interviews, um, and after going through that whole process, the um, decision was made to pursue the hiring of Abby Ristow for the position. Um, based on her performance in both the interview and testing process, um, we did do reference checks which were positive and a completed background check. We did make a conditional job offer to Abby for the position. Um, that offer is contingent on city council approval. Um, Abby currently works for the city of Oakdale as a records technician um, where she's involved in um, scanning documents into laser fees. She also does monthly and year-end report um, compilations and assembly for the city. And she also issues licenses um, uh, in, uh, for the city of Oakdale, yeah, excuse me, city of Oakdale. Um, prior to working for the city of Oakdale, Abby worked as an office assistant with the College of St. Scholastica and as an office clerk for the Washington County Park, Parks Department. Um, if Abby is approved tonight, her anticipated start date is June 4th. Um, and the recommendation before you tonight is to approve the hire of Abby Ristow as an intermediate accounting clerk position at the established grade for the position, which is grade five, step two. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have um, regarding the recommendation. This is a full-time 40 hours? Correct, yes. yes. All right. Well, yeah, any questions? No, I mean, it sounds to me like you did your homework, Dan. So you had over 30 applicants, you said? Sure. Sure. According to this, she's certainly qualified for the job. And mm -hmm. I'd make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation by the staff to uh, hire Abby Ristow, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. In the uh, intermediate accounting quick position I'll at the established grade for the position grade five, step two. I'll second the motion. All right. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Welcome, Abby. And Ryan, getting down to the end. Mayor, City Council, <coughs> your packet is the bid results and award recommendation letter for the 2018 street pavement maintenance project. Uh, we did receive six bids. Uh, low bid was definitely lower than engineer's estimates, so that was good. We'll be able to add some lineal feet to the project. Uh, <coughs> tonight we're uh, recommending the City Council awarded the project to Knife River Corporation in the amount of $678,485.50. Ryan, what was your estimate on this? This one was, uh, was $700, so... Okay. That's, that's not very far off, really, for an engineer's estimate, really. No. Not on that, really. not on that big an amount. It was close. It is if it does see it. A lot of hand. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of hand concrete yeah, work on this. Okay. So that kind of was some higher pricing there than typically with, obviously with curb, curb machines. Mm -hmm. We actually have a obviously contingent upon approval tonight. We have the pre-con set for this already for Thursday. I'd make a motion that we accept the bid by Knife River Corporation for six hundred seventy-eight thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars and fifty cents, as per. Ryan Goodman's estimate here. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now the safe routes to school. Next project in your agenda. Obviously, we had the bid opening a long time ago, but you have to go through the formal process of federal approval uh, before you can award it. So this bids, the bids were reviewed. Uh, from the Office of Civil Rights because the low bidder had to meet a disadvantaged business enterprise participation goal that's identified with the federal funding. That all checked out, so now we're um, basically um, been given approval to award the contract. So lowest bidder, Dressel Contract Incorporated, in the amount of $817,801.39 is our recommendation for award for the 2018 Safe Routes to School Pedestrian Connection Improvements. There is a location map in there, so some of you guys weren't part of um, when the grant was actually received three years ago. So it's just, that's how long ago these grants have been applied for. And uh, this project's being funded with the grant and construction state aid and a lot of things. 
Is this a fully funded grant? It's uh, 8020. Okay. No, excuse me. I don't know how we can beat it up any different than what it is. So I'll make the motion that we uh, award the contract at Vessel Contract Incorporated to the amount of uh, $817,801.39. I'll second. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan yeah. No. So now the 2017-2018 lift station improvements. I think we have a crowd here waiting for this one. <laughs> Ryan, do you want to take us through this? Yeah, I guess before we move into any action, I just want to ask on the floor if there's any questions or concerns I did not address. Uh, just I'll just quick summary. So if I didn't hit on any, something, feel free to come up. I uh, won't talk about 4C, it's a full recon right on within the site, within city right away. Actually brings it a little closer to the city road in that area. Uh, 12T uh, serves approximately 15 homes and uh, three homes on the north and uh, the rest of the homes to the south that are gravity fed and come into one uh, manhole then discharges into lift station 12T, which the force main goes northward parallel with existing gravity uh, and, it, and it is in between the houses and some garages headed north and before it tails back to North Shore. Scope of the work would uh, relocate the force main straight out to North Shore Trail from the existing cities right away where the lift station lies within and then uh, run parallel with the roadway up to the, the manhole so it would be relocated out of this garage area. This work does not include any work to the gravity line uh, or the private services that are within. The lift station itself is a full recon inside. Uh, the existing structure, kind of what's left, will still be there, uh, but retrofitted with a fiberglass insert. All new pumps, uh, control panel that will be replaced. Uh, it will be now set up for bypass uh, pumping the ability to you know, plug in a generator. If we did lose power, right now it doesn't have all that. Uh, so that's kind of the, the highlights of the project. I think I have one property owner to the south of the structure, just located at 9509. Uh, is there one or two to the north? I, I don't know this one. What number are you? 9495. You're in the way north end of it? I'm on the end of the, I'm the end where it cuts. Yep. That, so that uh, force main would be not even, would not be any, it'd be abandoned in place? Yeah. Uh, there would be some removal and replacement of the bituminous surface. I met, I heard from one property owner that he mentioned it went all the way down the lake. Our scope of work doesn't go all the way down the lake. Um, so it, the scope of work goes past the lift station area and then the manhole that where all the pipes come into. And that's kind of where it would be removed and replaced too. So I have a question. Um, the reason we have some of these gentlemen here is because they've experienced the backups. Do we know for sure what was causing those backups? Was it power outage, I and I? Um, just kind of curious if this is going to resolve inadequate pumping. I was curious if this could give them a peace of mind knowing that we're addressing one of, if not multiple issues that caused those backups. I don't have all the history Dave Adams has, and I wish he was here, but we got a pretty big water main break on 61 right now. That's unfortunate. So I can't answer that if we're not comfortable moving forward. My recommendation would be to table this action item until the next city council meeting so that information could be gathered and presented. Otherwise, other question I'd have is there, after um, this, is there leftover monies where if I and I were an issue that that is something we could maybe pursue yet on this project? Uh, slip lining of the gravity maybe? We would do that with a separate contract because we would then target specifically lining companies. Okay. So right now you're just going to get a markup to pass the paperwork where in one of my updates later tonight I was going to talk about uh, the competitive bidding thresholds have changed as a, a f uh, effect of August 1st. We can now go out for quotes up to 175000 versus the 100000 we've been at for 10 years. Certainly you could get a good lining project with 175,000. 
I'd hate to hold up any progress um, just for the answering a question or two that wouldn't even be factored in this project. I don't think we'd get favorable pricing through this contractor for lining because you're going to instantly pay a markup because this contractor doesn't do lining. Not a problem. Well, I think they've been doing a great job so far. I mean, I haven't heard um, one complaint other than, you know, a couple questions why it was taking so long to get the one over here. 6C obviously is the most visible area of, of all the projects, and that's where they had all the issues because they, they were go going really well. And then they hit that two-week cold spill, and everything got frozen in the ground, and they couldn't get it out. And then they yeah. tried pulling stuff out of the ground, and they kept breaking equipment. Finally, they said, we got to let it sit. We'll come back in the spring, right? Yeah. So or otherwise, everything else has gone really well. And I remember watching them yank on that thing over there. I thought they were going to break their back out oh, right I now. Too. It, was it was just crazy. Amazing. Anyway. Well, Ryan, uh, you're, oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, for the property owners, uh, do you have any concerns with, like, the abandoned pipes in the ground, anything like that? Um, Not with the abandoned pipes as far as I'm concerned. Because it sounds like everything's going to be farther away from the houses than they were before. Well, that could be a problem, too, because is there going to be the same amount of retention? That is part of the problem. There's a two, uh, 1980 report that said around the lake, some houses flooded in as much as 10 minutes, or as little as 10 minutes. Ours was a lot longer, so if you're moving it farther up, it is to still have the same retention capacity. Storage capacity. The, the capacity of the lift station is not being increased, nor, nor could you increase this unless you completely took out the existing structure and dropped a big wet well. But moving it up towards the road farther, would it decrease it? No, the station stays as is. The force main is being relocated. Donna, could you pull up the GIS? Yeah. yeah, I don't think we could do this project if we had to move the lift station to another location. No, it would be much more expensive. If we move the lift station, then we either have to extend gravity pipe or relocate gravity pipe. Because the lift station is placed at the low point of gravity pipe coming from two directions. Once we pull up the GIS, I think that'll help a lot because without knowing what you're looking at, it's pretty. Yeah. Can we tap him in? Plug in. More? No, oh, sorry. Big screen. I, I can see it fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, perfect. So the lift station is in yellow, the yellow box, and gravity comes, the green pipe is gravity, so gravity comes from the north to the lift station to the south, and then also picks up uh, several homes from the south. So that green circle over the yellow box is the low point in the gravity sanitary sewer line. So it comes there, and then there's a very short pipe segment going to the east into the lift station. When that lift station needs to pump out, right now it pumps up where the yellow line is parallel with the gravity line. Uh, that force main would be uh, relocated out to North Shore Trail, straight out, you know, right at the lift station. We'll um, pipe the line straight out to North Shore Trail and turn and go parallel with the other force main there. That will all be directionally drilled uh, to get to the next manhole. That answer? Well, you do need a comment. I did not say that. Because remember, we're using an existing steel casing that's there, and we're going to drop a fiberglass insert into the structure. So, with the steel casing, another question is the vehicle, since the gas lines are electrical and the pumps for the two houses have been put in down below, would there be plenty of room for a vehicle to get down and to work on all that? Yeah. Yeah. So the lift station is, I would say, there's a, that manhole is probably 20 feet west of the lift station, even though they look like they're on top of each other here. That's just the scale, right? And I would say the pavement goes another 15 feet west. So that way a truck could back all the way up down there and get into these manholes if they had to. I'm thinking about being. In 
So that's kind of a, I guess, a different issue than the list. Yeah, but there's property. adequate. I mean, yeah, there'll be adequate room on your on the property to, you know, for we're not private utilities. We're not shrinking any of the area. Is that what you're concerned about? Yeah, the the amount of space that the a vehicle could, could get through there. And basically, stay the same as it is now. Yeah. So we would we're removing and replacing the city access down to the station. I can show you on my phone. From above ground, it isn't really going to look any different when it's done. No. Other than just a newer box. Pavement so. going down to it because we'll have to I rip that up to get the force main back out to North Shore Trail before then we'll set up directionally drilling out on North Shore and then drill to the north. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times a day this lift station runs? I don't know that offhand. And you said it will be ready to go with generator access? Yep. All the uh, lift stations have that capability now after the project, or they all, some of them are actually the main, main ones. We put a, a permanent generator at them. Yeah. And the force main itself wouldn't... Um, I mean, the flooding that they're talking about would come from the gravity side of the sewer system, not the force main side, correct? Yeah, the force main is all pressure. So there's uh, obviously if we get a leak, just one little leak in the force main, then we got to go fix that because you lose the pressure to push the uh, stuff down the line. Now the, the sanitary sewer, you probably got some cracks in the joints. You know, this is typical with our sewer system, especially this age of sewer. All the services that are connected and tying into the house, they probably got cracks in their own service lines too, so. Okay. I can explain how the uh, problems occur if you have time or if you're home. I'd like to hear it briefly if you could. So the problem, come up to the podium. Come on up. The problems occur not not when the uh, lift station is working. If everything is working, it's working fine. In 2006, they were going to add two developments onto it. The problem happens if one of two things happen. If there's an electrical failure or if somewhere down line from this one, there's a failure in one of the stations. At that point, it all depends on how long it takes them to get it fixed because uh, not so much if there's an electrical failure, although uh, living on the lake, people can go down and, and bring buckets of water up to flush the toilets. But downline is where the problem is. And if it takes a long time, this station, because all of the houses in that area still have electrical power, they're still running everything into this station. And like I say, 2008 was the last time that this happened. Memorial Day, it's about 10 years now, right now. And uh, the Public Works Department does a fantastic job. They're the ones that probably have kept more of these things from happening. But at that time, they kind of forgot about us. They were pumping out of the uh, 13, and they're pumping out of 11. But for some reason, they weren't doing it out of 12, and it backed up. We uh, happened to have a little bypass there, so we weren't hit as bad. The neighbor's two-door down had a backflow valve, which failed, and it flooded out their lower level, which goes through the house and down to the lake. So that's where the problem was, and that's why I was asking about retention. Can you tell me approximately how long the power was out at that point? We were gone, but when we got home, the neighbors said that they had been flooded out. And we had some residuals. Like I said, ours came into the bathtub, the toilet. We had a little residuals in there, but for the most part, ours worked. Did you say that happened in 2008? 2008 Memorial Day. <coughs> so just kind of Memorial talking Day. about that. Obviously, Public Works has made a lot of changes since 2008 and has a lot of additional equipment to deal with the situations that still on, are ongoing. Losing power to our lift stations is not uncommon, and thus that's why uh, the promotion of the generators and portable generators 
that they now have on their system has helped significantly to reduce that time when they're not able to keep up with pumping, you know, stuff when we lose power. You know, just over the last two years, look how many times we've lost public works to go deal with in a situation because we've lost power. Here, now they'll have the ability to put a portable generator there and hook it up and pump it while they can go deal with other stuff instead of having to stand <coughs> with a back truck and suck it all out and then go haul somewhere and dump it, maybe to the next lift station that actually has power in town, dump it in there, and then they run back. Now they can just set a portable generator up there to deal with it. And if if the problem is beyond that, where is it going to be pumped to? Well, that's part of the strategy Public Works has developed. Well, I mean, there probably wasn't much of a plan in 2008. Just to be honest. Well, there's, well, I'll just show you, 50 list stations in town? Uh, 46. So, I mean, that's an astronomical number to be uh, uh, tackled. So my understanding is there's nothing in this project that's going to prohibit um, future solving these issues, if anything, is going to set you up to have generator access, easier to get a generator to it, correct? Yep. So equipment generators can get down to you guys faster there. Well, a generator is only going to help if there's something for it, some place for that to be pumped to. What I'm talking about is, say, lift station 11 is down. You can't put a generator on there to pump it down to that. Because so there's got, nowhere to go. There's obviously a series. He's on the way into the series of lift stations. And but part of some improvements that have happened since 2008 have put some generators on some of those going around this north side of the lake because everything here pumps up north. It comes all the way back past Aqua until it gets to the one main lift station and comes then south underneath the lake. So since 2008 9, there's been some improvements that have included generators, but you know. Public Works has looked at this and studied how they're going to strategically place this stuff and, you know, they've got that incorporated in this big project, right? And then in 2022, we plan to come with another project like we've talked about in the CIP planning and that will include some more generator work as well. So they've made huge steps on how to deal with emergency situations. I agree. We're not going to change the power outage until Excel does something differently. But we are way more set up in public works out, I think, is to deal with these situations and on a faster uh, well, schedule. And the controls have their own telemetry. And there's way more technology in the control panels. Some of these control panels out here in the old, they can't even touch them without getting shot. Yeah, yeah. standardizing. And Everything's right now synced to the phones. 2008, you didn't have that. I agree. But you're talking about electrical failure. I'm talking about what if there's a pipe that breaks. You can't pump it through that area, so it's back in our area, and the power is still on in our area. That's where it is. The uh, pipes were put in too shallow. And so once there's no place for it to be pumped to, then it has to have plenty of retention. Otherwise, if, if the repair isn't made further down, it doesn't matter how much electricity, how much backup electricity, how many generators you have, there's nowhere to, to have it pumped to. And that's what happened one time also. I think everybody's, everybody that's on the system is in that same scenario. There is no plan B if a pipe breaks. You got that well, the yeah, there actually is. They do come, like you were talking about, they come to the uh, lift stations and they pump out. Right, they have to pump. And manual. that's great, and that's what happened in 2008. They forgot about us. So, yeah, I, I think this... So, but I think the crew does a fantastic job as long as they're up to date on what, where the main problems are. Well, this should improve it, too, so it should reduce those potentials anyway. Um, well, the, well, the warnings are quicker. They know yeah. about it sooner. Yeah. You know, so I think it's a definitely a first step so. into solving your guys' issues that you have there, and there can, there can be more done. I don't see this as a roadblock to anything that, that could be done down in the future. Typically, more storage is inadequate. I think we don't agree. They put a list station in because you only go down so far anyway. So you're not going any deeper with your wet well, and it sounds like you guys don't want it any wider. So at this point in time, I think that would put the project... Yeah, that, that's another key that. question, too, is if the access would be able to get down there to work on our wells and to work on uh, everything if, if that is not going to block the, the uh, access. 
The plan showed to remove and replace the bituminous in the same area. So the new pavement matches the existing pavement. Okay, but the lift station is, well, uh, if there's some way to get a, a drawing of where it's going to be and how it's going to be, it sure would help. That's what I requested a couple of weeks ago. Thank I you. Touch base with you after the meeting. Oh, great. Uh, and then, you know, if this is approved tonight, we certainly can meet out in the field and put some stakes to show you physically, too, what everything would be looking like. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'll look for a uh, motion or any further discussion on the lift station change order. Well, Ryan, at first you were asking to have a table. Do you want to continue with that or you want to come I up with that? I used to just table it if we wanted for the discussion. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have issues leaving tonight's meeting. That might have changed something, but I think we addressed them. Okay. Mine's different than this, so it's mine's more of building the garage. I'm worried to see what's going to go on. I don't deal with flooding either because I'm on the door better than it's going down to us. So. All right. Which pipe's in your driveway? The gravity green yeah, or yellow? Yeah, so I'm at 9495, so they run parallel. And then one actually cuts, the force main actually cuts more angle. They came one stake and it's like 45 degree angle. And you want to build a garage where that white or yellow force main goes, right? Yes. Okay. Where it is existing now, and yep. then we move it over. So. Yeah, that solves your issue, I believe. Yep. All right. Well, I think this is a win win. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the change order. Do we have I'll, a second? I'll second with a request that staff um, coordinate with neighbors just at least on a We'll do, line. we'll coordinate with both stations and still power this week. All right, motion a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. 7M, Ace Hardware Invoices. Motion we approve the Ace Hardware Invoices. I'll second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abs abstain. And one abstain. Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, make a motion that we pay the Winnick supply invoices. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And one abstain. All right, staff updates. Donovan, we'll start with you. Um, the, uh, well, the uh, Planning Commission um, at their last uh, meeting discussed the comprehensive right-of-way ordinance. Um, and they, they seek more information, more clarity around some of the issues uh, involving uh, small wireless facilities in residential areas. So I'll go back to um, my commission and uh, I'm happy to take any questions from the council. Any questions, Donovan? Yeah. Al. I have nothing unless you have something for me. Anything for the chief? Is the uh, burn restriction still on? Burn restrictions are still on. Uh, we still, even though we've got green up and the yards are green, uh, when you get into the cattail and swamp areas, we're still uh, fairly brown. I would expect in the next couple weeks, as long as we get rain like we're getting today, that the burn restrictions will come off. All right, thank you. Peterson? Yeah, Mr. Mayor and City Council members, I have a few items for you here. Uh, Washington County Sheriff's Office will be rolling out their new records management system called TriTech on May 22nd. So it's been long awaited. Um, and uh, we've had some extensive trial runs the past few months, uh, months which have been going really well. And um, I know you'd be interested in this one. Training has been offered for businesses that sell alcohol and tobacco products in Washington County. A flyer describing the training was mailed to all businesses that sell tobacco and alcohol products on April 30th, and the training is being provided by the Washington County Sheriff's Office and Washington County Department of Public Health and Environment, and that training is going to occur in late May or early June. The training that's going to occur here in Forest Lake is going to be at the Headwaters uh, Service Center on May 21st from 3 to 4 p.m., and businesses and uh, personnel are um, encouraged to 
pre-register for that event. And there are other dates available in June in Cottage Grove and Stillwater as well if they can't make that one. And then uh, lastly, we're working, uh, the police department is working hard along with the Parks Department, Fire Department, Public Works to set up events where police will be present this summer, including Arts in the Park, Forest Lake Safety Camp, July 4th, Celebration, and many other outdoor events as well. And we're all looking forward to that. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, the only question I have, Chief, is the uh, training programs, are the, those businesses being notified? Yes, yep. By the raising? I'm sorry. In writing or by letter? Yes, yes. Yep, by letter. Uh, they were mailed, actually, the flyers, each uh, business in all of Washington County. And um, for our purposes, to every um, Forest Lake business that sells tobacco and alcohol. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chief, we had some issues with the e-cigs earlier this year. And um, part of the requirements was to implement some new um, software to verify ID, verify ages. Do you know if that's been installed at those businesses? Um, Bailey and I have, I, do you mind if I refer to you? Because I know you reached out to a couple of the businesses. Um, particularly the ones that we had um, some not compliance issues with this year. I did go into the businesses by, um, at the date that they were required to have them. They have them. Um, I'm not sure if they're using them, but they have them. Okay. Have we done any uh, follow-up compliance checks at any of those? At this point, we have not. Um, but um, just to let you know, uh, you know, we really did see an abundance, uh, an increase of those e-cigs being confiscated by, um, you know, kids having them at schools and, and out in public and things like that. It seems like it subsided a little bit. We're still coming across them, but boy, I tell you, a few months ago it was much different. So maybe something has happened positive. Um, I don't know if it's uh, was the enforcement, the word got out, um, but we're hoping that uh, it continues that way and that trend continues through the summer. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions for the chief? All right, Bailey. Nothing from me, thank you. All right, Dan. Uh, a couple quick updates. Uh, first, you may see a couple new faces in the front office staff. Um, we have some seasonal office assistants that are going to be starting. One starts, I believe, next week. Another one starts the week after Memorial Day. Plus, we have Abby starting, so there'll be some new staff up there. A couple of the seasonals will be there trying to help answer phones, kind of direct counter traffic. Um, and they're also going to help with some of the communication efforts that have just kind of been lagging behind as I've kind of shifted priorities recently. So, for the communication efforts, we have uh, one of the seasonals is actually looking at um, potentially going into marketing communications, so we're kind of tailoring some nice um, projects for her to take on as well. Um, a couple weeks, uh, two Fridays ago, I attended the Real Estate uh, Land Development Journals Conference um, and spoke on a panel on land development, um, was told to prepare for four questions, and they asked me only one of the four. The other three were completely out of left field, so I had to do my best to ad-lib as possible. Apparently, I didn't do too bad because a couple of developers afterwards had come up and asked uh, to kind of, they were, wanted to set up some meetings to come out and just kind of take a look at Forest Lake. So a lot of productive um, contacts were made at that conference. Um, there's a lot of, it was nice to kind of hear from a developer's perspective what they're looking for in land development on both the residential and the commercial side and kind of seeing, you know, where they're focusing their efforts at this point. So a lot of good information was um, had at that conference. Uh, talked to the Mercer group last week. He was working on finalizing the first draft of the position description and job profile for the administrative recruitments. Um, should hopefully have that ready to go for council review at the council workshop next Monday. Um, it doesn't need to be formally approved, so he's kind of looking at, uh, put that out as part of the workshop. If you have substantial changes you want made to that, let him know and he'll kind of finalize it so he can get that recruitment, um, those documents posted. Uh, on your radar screen as well, we're also kind of starting up, kind of gearing up for budget season um, here. So if you have anything that you're kind of wanting to kind of make sure that's, you know, include, include, included in the 2019 budget, uh, we'll kind of probably bring that up at a, a future workshop to have that initial conversation. But the, pro the process is going to be fairly similar to what we did in past years where it's brought forward in August. Finance Committee will see it in July, and we'll do the four meetings again in August. So I did uh, meet with 
um, 8 a.m. last week and kind of set a rough schedule, so I'll get that released out to council as well. But kind of as we kind of tee into that, um, probably ask for any kind of initial, you know, guidelines for what you guys are looking for in a, in a budget for 19 so we can start to kind of work to get uh, those budget workshops as productive as possible um, in August. And then at the airport commission meeting, uh, we also kind of kind of charted a course for the legal review of airport commission and city council. There's been a lot of kind of muddying the water of who's responsible for what. So I'm going to work with Bridget here to kind of develop a work plan to find out what the source documents are for the airport commission to kind of see how that group functions in contact with city council to kind of say, if lease agreements come forward, what is the proper path for all of that? So everybody's on the same page, but kind of hopefully clear the air there and kind of chart pretty specific um, guidelines for where everything kind of lives and warehouses at the airport commission. So I want that. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Dan? <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. Bridget. Thank you, Your Honor. No updates for me at this time. Well, I want to thank you for your work. It's compared to the other attorneys we've had over the years, I think, uh, you know, you're spot on and, and, you know, preemptive versus us having to wait for things or postpone things on meetings. So I wanted to point that out. It's the best one I've ever had. There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ryan? <laughs> uh, Mayor City Council, a few things just to update you on. Uh, tomorrow I'm attending a meeting with uh, product representatives of the Hornsby Street alignment. I got a kickoff meeting at Anoka County. Uh, and kind of related to that, uh, friendly reminder uh, in conjunction with MnDOT Site 35 design build project and work on Trunk Highway 97 and the upcoming 2019 Hornsby Street realignment project. It's a Columbus project. The City of Columbus will be closing Hornsby on Monday morning, May 21st. That'll be closed through the rest of 2018 and a majority of 2019. So, another closing in north of 97, correct? Yep, right at the right at the border there. There's a kind of a turnaround that's still left. If you did venture down there, you could pull and turn around. It will be properly signed all the way up to County Road 32 or 11th Avenue. So, not be yeah. it would not be a surprise for somebody to get all the way down there to find out it's closed. They'll still have access to the boat ramp from 11th. Yep. Okay. Uh, tomorrow morning, also, there's a pre-construction meeting for the Anoka Hennepin Credit Union in our last outlet here, so I would say by the end of the summer, there will be a building there. Wednesday night, I'm presenting at the Clear Lake Association uh, annual meeting, just basically talk about the construction projects that are ongoing around their lake and uh, planned with the Washington County's projects. And then uh, our street project, will have the pre-construction meeting Thursday. Uh, just an update on the quarters of commerce. No applications <coughs> within Washington County were successful or Chisago County. Basically, they awarded the work to the Southwest Metro area. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, again, that application that applied to Highway 97 between I-35 and Trunk Highway 61, um, but weren't successful at this time. I think I hit uh, briefly earlier on the bidding threshold, so as of August 1st, we'll have the ability to uh, do quote projects out to 175000 Certainly that saves money for the city on uh, plans and specs. You don't have to go through the full state uh, um, bid process here, so you can just do quote projects. And uh, I think that's all I had. Oh, one update that was good to see. Uh, remember when we did that uh, joint project with Rice Creek, we had funding from them for that water drain tile down 61 that relieved the water out between mm -hmm. the Moores and Macaulay? Mm -hmm. They were farming it this week, so. Yes. Lake okay. Susan is gone. Is that the one? That's Lake one. Lake Susan. Yeah. It's gone. Question for you, Ryan. Uh, you were <coughs> looking into getting some of the regrind coming off that 35 project. Is I have been, and... Currently, they're using what material they're bringing off there onto some subgrade improvements that they got. Uh, however, they know that if they have access, we are the first piece of people to be called. So Good. I, I, I attend these meetings that they're at, and I ask them every time, even though they know that nothing's probably changed in a week, but I'll be bugging them the next two years. So we want to get as much of that material as we can because you can see how much cheaper we're able to do maintenance on gravel road projects with that so, so um, maybe we should reach out to Columbus too but I just happened to think about it um, today 
with the Highway 97 bridge when they rebuild that, um, I don't know what landscape package Columbus or Anoka County's picked out, but it would be a great opportunity, especially with the design build, to you know to be able to uh, unify that a little bit and maybe incorporate um, components of Forest Lake and Columbus into a kind of a welcome and uh, some signage along there. I think we could probably achieve that a lot cheaper than trying to work through MnDOT on that. So. Yeah, I'll find Something out what they may have in. incorporated in the project to date. Uh, if it's not to the level of the RCD city member, they do have that landscape uh, partnership program to mm -hmm. add like plantings that we did successfully twice up at Broadway in uh, the ramp area. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities down the road, but certainly we'll try to incorporate what we could with the design build. So, All right. Thank you, Ryan. Any other questions for Ryan? All right, I think that covers all staff. So then, Sam, updates. I uh, spent some time at the Legion here this past weekend. Uh, they had a hero dance there uh, for the kids on Saturday night. And it was a matter of uh, kids that are less than 18 years old, they can invite their hero to go to, you know, to go dancing. And there's food and all that kind of stuff. And I'm nobody's hero, OK? But we took the grandkids there anyhow, and they had a riot. It was just. It was a lot of fun. They were. It was music and dancing, and and then they get to learn a little bit about uh, the veterans and that kind of thing. What's what it's all about. So it was really a good time. And of course, the next day, then, uh, uh, being that I missed out on opening a fishing, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still pouting about that. But anyways, uh, we went to the Mother's Day lunch, and they had it on Sunday at the Legion. It was very very good, well attended, lots and lots of food and. And uh, so that was pretty much what I did in the last couple of weeks, except for surgery. And <laughs> I was going to say, look, looking at the crutches behind you, I yeah. was wondering how much dancing you were doing. There, there was no dancing. I was strictly an observer. That was all. Just strictly an observer. All right. Ed. I've got nothing new other than the, we attended the airport commission, the last one. And that seems to be on track, and that commission is going much better than in the past. And uh, hopefully it continues like that. Other than that, everything we talked about has already been talked about tonight. So. All right, nice to hear. Um, I did want to bring up one thing, and, and Dan, maybe you want to bring it forward to the Airport Commission, but I think we have an opportunity right now to discuss um, maybe banning parachuting. Um, it was a source of a lot of complaints when it was there, and I think we'd like to open up that discussion anyway, whether the Airport Commission chooses to do that or not. But. Um, that was that was by far the most complaints for noise and and things that were happening out there. Um, move on to a few things for me. We uh, reached out for the Highway 8 uh, Task Force. Um, they're doing a lot of things up in Chisago County, trying to secure funding and improve Highway 8. Um, I'd like the City of Forest Lake to be involved with that. Uh, Unfortunately, we're involved from the start, but it's time for us to get involved with that. They have a meeting coming up next week, um, same time as our council meeting, unfortunately. So Ryan's going to uh, look to see if he can attend that. But if not, um, definitely in the future, I'd like to have somebody involved in that and, and try to advocate for that as well. I think it'll benefit our community as much as anybody's. Um, I attended the Senior Center last week. They're uh, thrilled with the improvements that are coming down the line for them. We're getting them some new doors on the front of the building. And um, we're also uh, reaching out to Washington County for a grant to uh, get a new dishwasher there. So I think there's a great possibility we're going to get that taken care of without costing us any money. How's the circulator bus going? Phenomenal. They're, that's the next one I was going to just but touch on. But um, kind of a soft start on that. We haven't really done any advertising or anything, and ridership has been extremely, extremely good on that, and you know, to the point of pushing capacity sometimes on it. So that's uh, turned out well. Um, it's a limited trial, but I think definitely they've been waiting years to get something like this, and um, a very reasonable start for for that. So I want to thank the EDA which rolls me into the next one. Since it was their project, we had an EDA meeting just before council tonight, working on some projects there, um, trying to promote buy local. 
uh, as well as looking at uh, you know some uh, new events and the Fourth of July and, and working with the Legion to build that up. Uh, I think there's uh, some excitement for that as well as a couple other projects that they're working on. Uh, in my spare time, I've also uh, reached out to um, Senator uh, Klobuchar and uh, to our Representative Detmer, both uh, to advocate for the 180th Street um, and the freeway exchange. I do have a meeting coming up with Senator Klobuchar's uh, transportation people, and so I'm going to go down a couple different routes to see where we can get this uh, happening, hopefully. Uh, we will be meeting with Ryan and uh, their transportation people as well in a couple of days to go through uh, um, looking at the studies and things that need to be done, the groundwork before uh, we can make the rest of it happen. So quite a bit happening there. Um, hopefully it all uh, comes to uh, something anyway. Is there a possibility Met Council might want to get uh, interested in that access with their bus route? Uh, for the seniors in that oh, or the access to the freeway I you know there I think there is but um, more than anything is is finding out you know just logic and you know is, is the logic there for it I believe there is the uh, the traffic numbers aren't there yet but they're not there because there's no road there and so you know what comes first but uh, as far as economic gains for Forest Lake, for Columbus, for the whole area, uh, I think it would be huge. Um, and, you know, it's that future vision. Uh, we've got farm fields out there that, you know, could be businesses. And it could be a, a huge tax base for Forest Lake. Um, Ed, I want to thank you. He pointed out an article in the paper that uh, the U.S. Army is looking for a uh, research headquarters with over 500 employees. And we are now on the list for that, and um, we're going to be pushing hard for that. We'll be sending a couple letters off to the uh, state of Minnesota to their um, Department of Economic Development and that to uh, bolster Force Lake and make sure that we're on the short list for that as well. So hopefully, hopefully Minnesota is, is strong in the running for uh, an opportunity like that, but we've got quite a few businesses in the area that... Um, our major suppliers to the U.S. Army, so I think there's a great tie-in. So hopefully we'll see some uh, progress along that line as well. So uh, go through mine. I think that covers most of what I have. So Blake, um, yep, still haven't met the fire board yet, but that's coming up. Uh, Parks, Trails, and Lakes, Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission uh, is going to move forward with getting the playground at Lake Seven Memorial Park inspected. Uh, first, to ensure its safety and uh, it's still compliant after the shifting that took place there. And secondly, to seek a professional recommendation on how to proceed with uh, repairs on it. Uh, thank the mayor for the appointment uh, to the commission. Oh, you're that is all. All right. Thank you. Mara? A couple of quick things. Uh, cable Commission met last week, Wednesday. Um, Scandia's departure, as indicated, they'd indicated over a year ago that they were planning to leave. That date is June 30th. Um, all indications are that that is still their plan. Um, so uh, that likely will bring forward some action to our council for a revision of the joint powers agreement and kind of, kind of re resetting the deck for what life looks like with a two city commission rather than a three city commission. Um, Columbus, we also f um, gave final approval to the Columbus um, sound system within their um, city center and that had been kind of on the capital improvement list for quite some time, so good to get that kicked free. Also noted that it, on that capital improvement plan is still the reimbursement of the Forest Lake for our city center for our equipment, um, so we should also be seeing that yet this year. Um, FLA had hosted their annual volunteer day out at Fenway Field May 6th, so it was good to see vol uh, FLA volunteers out there. Thanks to everyone who participated, did some painting, did some grounds work, maintenance. Um, good to see the volunteerism out there. Um, also YMCA, just a good reminder of th that there are community access hours available to all Forest Lake residents as part of our partnership with the YMCA. Um, splash, especially as you're starting to think about summer and schools getting out, the splash pad will be opening up and there are community hours available for the gym as well as the splash pad and the community room at no cost to Forest Lake residents. So. All right. I've got 
I'm going to take a couple more minutes here because uh, I've got a couple issues with a couple people and normally I would never do this, but uh, we have a planning commission commissioner, Eric Langness, that took some time, um, bully puppet when he was up here at the planning commission to call me out uh, about my vote. Uh, I just, it bothers me a lot to do that. If you want to do it on your own time, it's one thing, but when you're a commissioner up here and then to put that on the internet and put it on, you know, your own websites is, I just, uh, it's wrong. It, it was a cheap shot. Uh, I know Eric's upset because I did not appoint him for city council, but um, to say this was about the uh, vote to the treatment facility, um, no, I, I have a lot of issues with that. Uh, Eric himself at the next planning commission voted against a, uh, um, an amendment for aqua which is another business, and I don't know how many other times that, you know, you can say you support businesses, but uh, whether it's a cell tower that he votes against, um, even though that's on a landowner, um, landowner rights, um, but to do this and call me out for that and not, you know, have me present to be able to respond or do anything else I think is wrong. And that brings me to the other one, Mara, and that's yours, saying that I support a junkyard on the 33 acres of land when you put there is wrong because I never did support that. Um, you made the correction, so I will acknowledge that, but um, you came out and said that I supported the business on that piece of property, and that's not the case. I do support businesses, and businesses like that are in need. I understand that, but I never supported it on that piece of land, and I just... Think it's wrong you didn't to have support that. it on. You, so, want to make sure you understand. You didn't support it on the Highway 97 tract of land. I never did. Okay. Um, you said some other things on there to me to blame. There's things that's been deleted. Um, I just deleted? expect a little more mm -hmm. dignity when we're on things. Um, I think you mentioned that you needed to go get a lobotomy after the meeting that I appointed Blaine. Um, that was on my personal page. That wasn't on the city council Okay. Page. Well, um, I think we need a little level of decorum here, and for the most part, I think we do a pretty good job of that, but um, we do cross the line every now and then, so a little bit of a reminder, and hope we can go into the future with uh, some decorum anyway. So, All right. Ed. The only thing I'd like to add to that is I read the comments on Facebook read the article that uh, was written in the lowdown about that you preferred a junkyard over a mental health facility and that you went on record and voted on that. We were at a workshop. Everybody knows we don't vote at workshops. There was no vote. Everybody knows that if you read the minutes of that workshop, that comment was never made, that he preferred a John Garrett over a mental health facility. That was yep. never. And it, yet it's appearing in print as though it's gospel. And that's wrong. But it is true that there was support indicated for zoning change for the, let's call it a salvage yard, an internet based salvage yard. There was support indicated for. No, not Mara, for the, zoning. Mara, the only person that brought that forward was Donovan, wanted to come up with an ordinance to make it more difficult for those types of businesses to locate. And Ben's response was he didn't, he would not be in favor of making an ordinance that would affect dealerships that we already have. That was the discussion that I recall in that workshop. There was never, and to elude that, he preferred a junkyard over the mental health facility. When the mental health facility wasn't even mentioned at that workshop, it's that was totally wrong. wrong. Thank you, Ed. Um, let me say that. If you ever need to clarify something, feel free to contact me on that. I think your record is clear. All right. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.